Alex, I'm going to vlog standing up this week. It'll make everything I say seem much more urgent and important. So this week I'm going to be reviewing Bear by Marion Ingle. This is one of those books that's weird and that it's really well regarded and yet no one's actually heard of it. I mean, the Writers' Trust of Canada set up an award in Marion Ingle's memory to give out to female writers, and Bear has won the Governor General's Award, and yet I wouldn't have heard of it if I hadn't had to read it for Canlit, and you wouldn't have heard of it if I hadn't complained about having to read it for Canlit. It's also one of those books that's weird for a couple other reasons. Just as a warning, if there's anyone watching who's overly offended by unusual content of the Bow Chicka Wow Wow nature, you might want to stop watching now. Bear is the story of Lou, an archivist working at a historical institute in Toronto. Lou pretty much hates her life. I mean, it's incredibly boring. She's stuck in a job that she hates. She doesn't have anyone in her life except for her boss, who she occasionally has sex with on his desk. The Institute has willed a house up in northern Ontario. Lou is given the job of heading up there for the summer and cataloging all the contents. And no, northern Ontario does not mean Sudbury. For the entire summer, Lou is all alone on an island in the middle of some lake up in northern Ontario, save for the occasional visits from Homer, the manager of a nearby general store, and the bear, who was considered the pet of the man who owned the house before the Institute. If you guessed that Lou is going to rediscover her identity amidst the wondrous natural landscape of Canada, congratulations, you win no prize. The reason this book was considered highly controversial when it first came out and why it still is today is because of how exactly she does this. That's right, it's because of the bear. While Lou is naturally initially terrified of the bear, it is the only other living thing on the island. So eventually she grows to tolerate it, seek it out for companionship, and even become friends. Until it ends, as TV has taught me all relationships should, with sex. Although, I guess it's not technically sex. I guess it's more like bear third base. Anyways, Lou covers herself in honey to get the bear to eat her out. Yeah, it's that kind of book. The relationship eventually ends when Lou tries to return the favor, and the bear realizes that he's a bear, and he attacks her. A bear? Seriously? Those things are huge. Yeah, they are. So, for the rest of this video, I'm just going to kind of glance over the squickiness inherent in the whole bear thing, which, by the way, is described in great detail and just focus on the rest of the book. The tongue that was muscular but also capable of lengthening itself like an eel found all her secret places, and like no human being she had ever known it perverse in her pleasure. When she came, she whimpered, and the bear licked away her tears. So I'll admit that when I first heard what this book was about, I was biased against it from the start. I mean, one of the things that I really can't stand in literature is the over-romanticizing of nature, and that's pretty much what all this book is about. I mean, I'm the first to admit that I'm not a particularly outdoorsy person. The closest I get to nature on a regular basis is Animal Crossing. But the thing is, I'm from northwestern Ontario, and I kind of live in the middle of nowhere. So compared to some of the people I've talked to, I get more exposure to nature when I take the dogs for a walk than these people have in their entire lifetime. But the way a lot of people feel about nature and the way it's portrayed in a lot of literature is as though it's a beautiful, mystical place where one can go and be alone with one's thoughts amidst the birds and the frogs and they can feel the movement of the universe and be closer to God or something like that. And that's not entirely inaccurate, but it also ignores the bugs, the difficulties of walking off a trail, the mud, and the bobcats and make witch noises outside your window at one in the morning. Seriously, it freaks me out. This book is unusual in that it manages to glorify nature without whitewashing all of this. I mean, Lou is eaten alive by bugs, she is almost going insane from the loneliness, and she starts to personify this bear because it's the only contact with, like, a living thing that she has. And yet this is also treated as a good thing and an important piece of Lou's development, and it's raising her up from the pathetic person that she was before. I guess one way of looking at it is that we are seeing Lou's view of nature and that it changes as she changes, and then she is ultimately jolted back to reality when the bear reminds her that, dude, I'm a bear. You shouldn't be having sex with me. I can kill you with one hand. Paw. And that does fit in with the rest of the book. I mean, it's one of those books where the plot is, like, superficial at best, and then the symbolism is just coming out the yin-yang. But this isn't enough to save the fact that the plot is still basically woman goes into the woods, rediscovers herself. It's been done. A lot. The writing's not even that good. It's somehow both really over-the-top, flowery, purple prose, and yet really, really dry at the exact same time. And the sex scenes are described in this, like, really blunt language that comes out of nowhere. If you ask me, Ingle knew how shocking it was going to be, and she just went out of her way to make it as straightforward as possible, so you were really hammered over the head with it. But you can't support a book on controversy. It's not the worst book I've ever read, it's not even the worst book I had to read for Canlit, but it doesn't rank very high. I'll give it one and a half octagonal houses out of five. Although, Alex, you might actually like this book. I mean, it's all about sexuality and feminism, and those are pretty much your bread and butter. If you don't, I might have to revoke your title of my token feminist friend. 
Anyways, I'll see you next week when you review A Walk to Remember as punishment for finishing your video late. And keeping this review and the subject of this book in mind, I'm going to give you three words that will utterly destroy your childhood. Winnie the Pooh. Eventually she starts feeding it and they get to a point where, you know, they can get along in peace without wanting to hurt each other. Jesus, cat!